<clears throat> Fire away, Mike. Right then, so uh, mostly this is just a photo selection because uh, you should have all read about all of this in the last two newsletters anyway. So go back in time a bit to 2014, and this is where we started in Pearl Mine before the MCG were involved. This was uh, Mendip Caving Group. Sorry, this was Mendip Outdoor Pursuits before Mendip Caving Group got involved. On to the next one. Uh, 2016, still at Pearl Mine. Got Bill and Keith there and Mike Richardson at the back. They put a big fence around it and we set up this uh, hauling frame because it was probably about 50 foot deep at this point. And yeah. uh, this was just before we made the breakthrough that uh, Ed did presentations on beforehand. Next one. Mike got on his head. A spotty hat. <laughs> balaclava. <laughs> So we knew this was a go before we started, didn't we, Mike? Yeah, it'd been open in the nice 70s. So this was 2018 when we removed the fence. But if you imagine it without the concrete block on top, that's pretty much what it looked like in 1970 when the quarry company filled it up. And that was just a selection of photos that haven't appeared anywhere. I thought I'd throw in. So next we're going on to what's been found this year. So the hole at the top of Biff's Big Rift is somewhat snug, as you can see. This is mm -hmm. coming up through it. Next pitch. And then the first time we cross this rift, which is about five metres deep, just um, using the non-existent steps on either wall. But then we carried up the scaffold bar that uh, Mike Richardson had left below to use that because it was a lot easier to walk across. And there's actually about another 20 metres of passage down below that that goes off underneath where uh, Dan is standing taking my photo. Uh, next picture. It's not very clear, I'm afraid, but this is what we've got at the end. That's looking straight up above me, a lot of earth that had come down in a very impressive cascade the previous week. And after we cleared it all away, you can just make out there's rocks at the top that have been stacked up like the top of an igloo. Um, and that's the cap back up to the surface. So we're trying to work out exactly where that is. We haven't actually managed to get the new passage surveyed yet to uh, check where that is relative to the top. But uh, there seems to be passage beyond there as well. But uh, I don't particularly want to go into that chamber and dig it out without collapsing it all around myself. Right then, this is actually Fern Mine before Graham got involved with it. And that's Ed, but uh, taken by Shepton trip down there and there's a massive five ton boulder that he's going down the edge of not wanting to touch but we'll see in the next photo this is after graham's got involved <laughs> <laughs> gathered the uh, bits of the boulder quite well about the place next picture rain boulders rocks caves in a perfect digging gear oh yes <laughs> <clears throat> and that's looking down the hole so there's a little side alcove that was more easily open before we blew up the boulder and uh, not quite so easily afterwards we want to the next one we come on a year we've done a lot of clearing out and you can see um, at the back well it's martin cross down there and at the back there's a ginged wall which is the only bit that survived the miners left because when they dumped the huge boulder on it it's made the whole lot collapse which is most of what's filling up the floor and we're not quite uh, sure what's below us it was the quarry in. company who pushed the boulder in was it mike it, I believe so yes it's certainly one of the landowners yeah. <laughs> and also uh, yeah oh, can't quite see He's a nice boulder there there's an ed holding a very nice block from the ginging that's got a bit huge drill hole from the original miners in the 1700s but uh, just got cut off the bottom of the picture. Next one. This is moving on to the end of uh, 2019. We've dug out quite a lot and didn't actually get much deeper beyond that before the floor disappeared. So uh, that's looking into the same slot again. And I think that's Bill oh, again nice. down the bottom yes. with uh, Martin's hauling truck trug coming out. And um, the next one. 
And you can see there's quite a lot more of that wall beginning the miners left visible now because we've cleared so much out. But the next move was next picture. We had barbecue on the side, so there was uh, sausage rolls or sausages in rolls there. <laughs> and we've actually got a barbecue and table on site now, not just having the open fire to cook them on. And uh, over the years, we have had beer, ice cream, pizza, all sorts of things delivered up to the dig. <laughs> uh, it's quite sociable. Then we put the frame in because we were worried about the sides collapsing as they had at Pearl beforehand. So this is one of Tom's photos looking down. Let's go below, next one as well. And Tom's actually in the alcove looking out. So all the metal work was provided by Biff. Unfortunately, he didn't get to see this because uh, mm. he actually passed away on the day we found Biff's big rift in Pearl. Yeah. So those are these yeah. UAV, uh, big UAV ladders, aren't they, from the uh, army? Yeah. And then that's the uh, top of it. When it's covered up, you can see the kettle and deck chairs hanging down inside. And this is actually uh, been padlocked up now because the floor is totally gone. There's nothing really supporting it. We could see about 20 foot further down the last time we were in there. And then we had another collapse, which was forced by uh, stick a crowbar in. We knew it was gonna happen and that uh, filled it in. And this is a different hole that uh, opened up. Well, we opened up during the lockdown and you could just see the top of that archway where it opened up, but uh, looks fairly similar to how Pearl looked when we first got down about 10 foot into it, but this is only about five foot. And that's most of the team in the pub at the Crown, which is our regular spot afterwards. Is that <laughs> <laughs> that's one of oh, those are the days. Soon, soon. Out of the uh, roof of, uh, so the bit we found is up above me and I'm abseiling back down again, back into Biff Rift's big rift in Pearl Mine there. Right, hopefully going to move on to uh, Stock Hill. Oh, no, a bit more of Pearl. That's also standing on the scaffold bar, drilling the, up the wall. Keep going. Here we go. This is uh, the main chamber we found 2017 when Stock Hill won the digging awards. Not 27, 2019. And then going up the right hand side of that passage, you get this. You can look down to the right downwards, but you can't actually get through. You have to climb up in the roof. And then next picture, you're up in this tube that I had to clear of rocks and just roll and pass myself down onto the floor behind. So everybody else was well away. And the first time I actually went through here was Jason and Mark were the only others in the cave and they were off exploring somewhere else. And I pushed what do you reckon? Side. What do you reckon his beard looks like now in lockdown? Uh, I think it's fairly similar. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hell of a beard. Who's that? Trevor Hughes, if uh, those who don't know who is. <laughs> He's the BEC, has now joined the Axbridge. It was quite snug when we first got through that passage. This is what presents on the other side, though. Lovely Ooh. formation as you come out at the end of the tube and then looking down below that formation. You've got this big hole going down and then it goes down and down again, about 100 foot down to the streamway below. So the Ooh. big passageway we walked up the other side had also gone down to the streamway, but had gone down a nice gentle slope. This one went vertically down. Next picture. This is the first trip we went exploring cool. at the bottom in the streamways and we've actually come back over the top of the stream and this is just about five metres away from where I was standing in the last photo and we now have a barrier pass that you can go down the first 10 foot or so of the climb and then through a slot rather than having to go all the way through. This is what a lot of the walls are like in the streamway, very sharp, totally trashed my suit, lots and lots of fossils in there as well, all seashells. And this is heading up towards uh, Stock Hill Swallet that the Axbridge dug in the 60s, but didn't actually break through and it would have been an awful lot easier to come in that way than the way we got in. So Adrian, another BEC digger, 
in the passageways beyond. And this is all quite snug streamways. It's uh, somebody lying on the floor trying to get along the next passage because the top bit's far too narrow and the bottom bit's only just big enough for a body. So that's what we had to do in the upstream bits. And it basically branches in two different passageways. They can go off in two different directions. Then a bit later, we actually found out there was a much bigger passageway over the top, but at 90 degrees. In the end, we did find some lovely mud formations. And then we should switch to uh, go off downstream. So this is back in the main passage, looking down from where the previous photo was looking up. And it's going down about 50 degrees. And again, at the bottom, it splits. And you've got one passageway running off in a walkable streamway. And the other way goes through a narrow passage. And you can climb up there into the roof, into this boulder chamber. Uh, Trevor's actually leaning forwards onto the rocks. And this is above the next little bit we're going to look at. But it doesn't really go anywhere apart from a very small entrance. This is quite a nice coral fossil. That's mm. a beehive shape, like um, honeycomb coral. And that's the sump that uh, Claire Cohen dived and couldn't find any ways on. There's just a tiny little dribble of water running into it somewhere. And then the next picture is that, that tiny little dribble running out. So that's the stream carrying on. And you can get your body in that first bit, but where it disappears down the little drop at the top of the photo, there's no way you could get through. So we go back. This is looking back along the passage, connecting that bit to a 90 degree angle, which we're going to look down next photo. They got uh, Duncan drilling a hole in the wall there to make this passageway wider. So this actually goes down and joins that streamway. As you can hear the water at the bottom of it, but it's about 10 meters up the chamber and five meters across from where the water disappears. And then that's pretty much what the end looked like last time I saw it. Pretty tiny because that's quite a small crowbar. Um, but the others have been in since I was and have made that wider. And they can now, it's big enough to get one foot through into a space that's large enough to stand in. But they don't know what's around the corner. But hopefully we can follow the stream from there on. So. Wow. Mm. Mm. This is the digging crew for uh, Wookiee, but they're actually at Halloween Rift here. Um, then back into Wookiee, this is the end of Wookiee 20, the sand dig. And this is where we were stacking all the kit. So John on the left is hauling tubs up and Roz is actually leaning on the rocks we've stacked in and all the earth is going in behind those. And then the next picture is what we're digging it out of. So this was a huge sump at some time in the past. That's looking down, we've dropped the floor a good five meters, taken a huge amount of material out and when we get down the floor, we found lots of big rocks in the way. So we've started going sideways off to the right there, which is the end of the photo. And this is where we've actually dug under an archway and starting to dig up into the next bit, which is what we found at the start of this year, into the next picture. So they're trying to get a, a 10 foot aluminium ladder for a hole that doesn't fit through there. We did eventually get it through, but it took about another three digging sessions. But this came up into quite a nice chamber, which the next picture is of. Ooh. <clears throat> so we've got our uh, man-made wall on the left there for stacking more material up. This is actually one of Mark Berkey's chunky's photos. And Tavi's coming out of the hole that we had the ladder wedged in before. It's quite a lot bigger now. The chamber's uh, 20 metres long by five metres high. This is looking the opposite way along the chamber. We dug another hole down in the floor at the end, hit solid rock. So came back and started digging in the little archways either side. And eventually found the one right next to the hole we'd uh, been digging. It was the one that drafted and took us through into the next massive bit of chamber, but it was through a flat out squeeze. Although the rest of the way here, you can stand up the whole way. Next picture. <laughs> this is the sort of thing we found the other side. And that's one of the smaller bits of passage that connects the main to the main two run parallel to each other and uh, then have these narrower rifts and lower phreatic passages joining them we'll take it on Ooh. they got quite a lot of uh, i think it's lithostrontium coral caveman poo yeah and take a photo of that because it's in the floor so it's going to get covered in mud 
at some point. And some quite impressive um, rocks with the conglomerate and a lot of iron in here. So we think it's probably uh, made by hot water coming up from below, because as well as this next picture, wow. this is looking down the Dude. chamber. You might recognize this view from the front cover of the last issue, but a different uh, photo of it. Different viewpoint. <clears throat> yep. So this is looking down the main passage. We have climbed up the wall into the roof, and there is about 20 meters of continuation there, but it doesn't go anywhere. These crystals are pretty huge, so they're well over an inch, two inches long. It looks like Penn Park Hall. Yeah, it's another reason why we think it's probably made by hot water coming up from springs. Yeah, you know, that's, the, that's the same as, as, San, as Axbridge Hill and Carcass Cave, had a lot of that. Yeah. That's a brilliant photo. Yeah, this is one of uh, Mark Berkey's, so not surprising. Okay. Next. Mm. So down the bottom of that same passageway, we've got these lovely little veils of mud that are dripping off the rocks and been left by the water. Frame. There's no sign of any streamways flowing through here. It's all been water that's filled up and then drained away again. So those are quite delicate little veils of mud just stuck on all the rocks as the water's been running away. And then next picture. Oh, oh. These again about a couple of inches high, and a whole floor just below those mud veils is just covered with little pinnacles. So the water's been dripping onto these and then running down the sides, sculpting them away a bit. And somehow still have the pebbles on top that stop the water washing away the top of them. Well, I don't think there's any in that picture. Be in that particular picture. Next one. So you go back to where you came into that chamber and there's a series of passageways like this that you can take as a separate option back to where you started in the chamber. Next one. Whoa. Along that passage, there's some cryogenic stalactites. So this is the stuff that's crystallized out of the water when the water's frozen up as ice. And then when the ice has melted, it's dropped down onto the surface and it's generally only found on top of raised surfaces because everything lower down has been washed away off the floor. There's quite a lot of this around actually mend it. They hadn't realized it was made by the ice until a couple of years ago, really. And they're just tiny little flakes, the biggest ones there, any centimeter at most. So bottom left of the picture is all Wiki 20 that was known before. The January 2020 breakthrough is into that first chamber where we had the ladder and the picture of Tav standing in the side. And then the September breakthrough is the new stuff. So the first bit running left, right is the first um, big passageway, which is the photo that has the gray line running across to it. You walk up that to the right and you've got the high rift that then runs up to the top of the picture. And then that big passageway is the bit all running across the top of the photo. And then down the side, you've got that dog leg bit running back. That's the low level stuff. That's only a crawling passage. Takes you back to where you came in. And down the other side, you've got Wookie 24, which is the main stream passageway running up um, from bottom right to top left of the picture. That sting corner where it turns a sharp angle and then runs back and you've got a bit that cuts the corner on the right hand side, which is the high level passage that we're going to see in a minute. And the connection is actually from the passageway running towards it coming from 20 to that little doesn't look like much passage coming out from 24 from the side of it, rather than where we expected to come into the corner, we came a bit lower down. And uh, the water flows quite fast around Sting Corner on that tight bend. So it's quite good to have the bypass over the top. It's a nice mud formation that we got on the conglomerate, just the other side of the uh, connection into 24. The water's basically just hit that and splatted out. The first time we went in, this passage was all dry, a sandy floor. Um, the water was a bit higher the second time we went in. We've only been in twice. So it was actually flooded up to about waist deep but there's more passageway where the light on the right is. 
and a climb up on the left, which takes you up. Um, Tom climbed that and then put a ladder down for the rest of us, which made life an awful lot easier. Next picture. <clears throat> so that's the ladder. We had to go up into the high level oxbow that cuts the corner. This day when the water was up in the chamber, the water was far too fast around the corner and that's looking back down the ladder. Uh, Rosie's just readjusting it and can get it better positioned. Next one. Quite a lovely shape in this high level oxbow. You can tell it's phreatic. It's been abandoned a long time. The streamway's cut a long way down from there. I think it was a uh, certainly longer than a 10 meter ladder, I think it was 15 that we had in there. And they're just ringing another ladder at the far end. So here's the next photo. The ladder is just behind Duncan there. And this is looking out into the main passageway beyond. And the divers actually have a permanent camp set up up on the shelving beyond where they've got a tent and tea making facilities and all sorts. All right, next one. So let's come back down the uh, aluminium, um, the big ladder and this is looking back to the way we came in so the divers have brought that fixed ladder in you climb up that crawl over the top of the boulder on the left hand side and then up the slot you can see on the left well center of picture just to the left of the ladder and that's your way back out again and what I'll do is I'll uh, put some links to Chris Binding's videos you can see their trip 